Bogota, Colombia's bustling capital. In 1948, it went up in flames. In 24 hours, the central cemetery was filled with the dead. Some statistics say as many as 3,000 people lost their lives. This is what is known popularly as the Bogotazo. To understand this event, we must understand the life of one Colombian man, Bogota's mayor, Jorge Eliezer Gaitan. Gaitan was one of the most charismatic political leaders in Colombia's history. Adored by the working class, thousands filled the streets to hear his speeches in the 1940s. He spoke of land reform and moderate nationalism. He rejected the oligarchy and fought for minorities, workers and farmers who had no voice in Colombia. At the core of his beliefs was the call for a gradual and peaceful change that would bring balance between Colombia's classes. First, there shouldn't be hatred between conservatives and liberals. Also, the interests of the nation should be put above party interests. Por encima de los intereses políticos partidarios. Entregaron sus vidas al servicio de la democracia. Gaitán, a presidential hopeful for the 1950 elections, was shot dead on April 9, 1948. His alleged killer was quickly caught and killed by the enraged mob as he ran from the crime scene. For the next 10 hours, riots. Buildings destroyed. Thousands killed. We're standing outside the facade of where Gaitan was killed. I want to know, why was there such a violent reaction to his death? First, it is an expression of impotence, anger, and vengeance felt by the public and the Gaitan supporters for their charismatic leader. It is the accumulated pain, the hopelessness of a shattered hope. Pero es el dolor acumulado, la impotencia. The Bogotazo marked the beginning of a brutal decade of violence known as La Violencia. The rural conflict between conservative and liberal parties left 200,000 dead in just 10 years. The violence triggered by Gaitan's death later spread to other parts of the country, and a resistance began against the conservative government by liberal guerrillas. These were the origins of the new armed movement. It was this political violence and exclusion that helped trigger Colombia's armed conflict. In 1964, Manuel Marulanda, a militant in a liberal militia, aligned himself with the Communist Party to create one of Latin America's oldest insurgent groups, FARC. Gaitan's daughter, Gloria, says her mother always warned that Gaitan's socialist ideals would create powerful enemies in the ruling conservative classes. Mi mamá siempre le advertía que, que no lo iban a dejar. My mother always told my father they would never allow him to reach power. She said they will kill you as they are killing your followers. But my father said, I will never be killed. A todos tus seguidores, a ti también te van a matar. Y mi papá decía, a mí no me matan. It has been 70 years since Gaitan's death. Close to half a million Colombians have died trying to achieve his ideals of equality, peace, and unity. And even after the peace agreement between the Colombian government and the largest insurgent group, FARC, the deaths continue. One international non-governmental agency reports 22 social activists died in January of 2018 alone. Every other day, trade unionists, land activists, and human rights defenders are killed. Colombia is a country of assassinations from the left and the right. Since 2011, the Colombian government has declared the day of Gaitan's death, April 9th, as the National Day for Memory and Solidarity with the Victims of the Armed Conflict. I think it is terrible. It should be a day to remember the death of Gaitan. Al perder la esperanza, porque sabían que la muerte de Gaitan no, yo creo que... I think as we commemorate the 70 years of the death of Gaitan, Colombians keep alive the memory of what he meant as leader of the Liberal Party and as hope for the poor of Colombia. Michelle Vega, CGTN, Colombia.